All right, what's up, everybody? So as you can see here, I have my assortment of soprano saxophone mouthpieces. So I'm going to be doing a mouthpiece overview, and then uh, I'm going to do individual playthroughs and reviews of all of these mouthpieces. I've had all of these mouthpieces for quite some time. I put the tenor saxophone uh, metal mouthpiece in the middle just so that way you could get a reference for the size. So. I will be doing individual mouthpiece reviews for all of these, but I just want to do a quick overview so you guys know what's coming soon. So over to the left, we have two of the Selmer Sessions. That's an I and a J. See the I there and the J, that's coming off a little bit. This one that's in the middle, this is the newest one. This is the one that comes with the Alora Paris Series soprano saxophone that I just bought. Over here, we have as some of you who are already subscribed to my channel would expect. We have Van Dorn, this is the S8. And then we have a Dukov D7 that's right here. And then we have a Rico B7, which is has a similar kind of inside as my uh, Rico M5. All right, so let's take a closer look. All right, so I had like a different older Dukov uh, and a Yanagisawa and also a metal and I think a hard rubber auto link mouthpiece, but I'm pretty sure that I sold those when I sold my last Soprano, which was a Yamaha 82Z. I've had uh, probably three or four Cannonball Soprano saxophones, and they've all pretty much had the same problem. I was trying to reproduce the Yamaha 62 from like the 1990s by buying the 82Z, but I still found that that problem was there with the Soprano that I have now. Surprisingly enough, that problem is not there. It has some other issues. I'll be doing a review on that horn in particular, but since this is a mouthpiece review, uh, some of these mouthpieces really, really help to alleviate that one specific issue that I've had with the Soprano. You can see the J over here, but you can't see the I right here. But one thing I want to show you is the inside. It's very circular for both of these Selmers here. Just take a note of the size of what that looks like from this angle. And then the only other one that looks like that that I have is this Duke off. You can see how much more open this mouthpiece is, but still very circular inside. And then over here, this is the one that comes with the Allure Paris. We have this kind of definitive horseshoe style shape, or this kind of like upside down dome looking thing here. And we also have a very similar type of thing with the Van Dorn mouthpiece. Or then if we move over here to the Rico, I have something that's a little unusual. It's kind of like it's domed on both sides a little bit. And also, if you've checked out my uh, my Rico M5 tenor mouthpiece, you notice this type of forehead that's on the front of this mouthpiece. It's very similar. But this has a duck bill. I'll do a more in-depth review of this mouthpiece later. But, so one of the things that you're starting to notice in my videos is that when I'm doing all these mouthpiece reviews and whatnot, a lot of these mouthpieces don't come with a ligature. So, uh, for a lot of these mouthpieces, I'll be using this BG ligature. And uh, here's what your standard, just cheap run of the mill ligature. I wish they would just give us these things when we buy mouthpieces. So that way, at least you have something. You don't have to dig up your old ligature from somewhere else and keep switching them out. But at any rate, I'm looking forward to playing all of these mouthpieces for you so that way I can help eliminate the amount of time and effort that you have to put into finding something that you like. Alright, thanks a lot.